The Trigger Spoon Junior, big enough to draw strikes from trophy trout, small enough to round up a limit of pan-sized fryers, and the perfect spoon to put on the end of your line when the trolling gets tough. Pick up your kit at Trigger Spoon Juniors today at fishhuntshoot.com. want results next time you go trout fishing? Get yourself a set of trigger spoons and put a limit on the stringer. They flat out produce. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Um, we're right at the end of May. Um, we're, we're in that transition zone from spring to summer. In fact, here in the Sierra Foothills overnight, um, we had big thunder, big rain, we had some hail. Um, just a few days ago, we had temperatures that were, you know, pushing 100 degrees. So we're in that, that very volatile time of the year when fronts are still moving through, when we're still getting, you know, shots of that cooler wet weather, but we are also getting those periods, you know, that are, that are warm and dry. And what this is doing, you know, what this always does as you go into June, we're starting to see surface temperatures spike up. We're starting to see the prey in our lakes kind of disperse. And we're seeing the trout make that transition from the spring pattern when they're up on top, when they're tight to the bank, well now they're moving into deeper water and at some, some destinations like Lake Shasta, they're moving more into open water. Um, and they're chasing two things. The trout are chasing forage and they're chasing temperature. They're always looking for that, you know, in the case of rainbows, they're always looking for that 56 degree water. Well, as we transition into June, you know, at a lot of places, you're gonna find that water temperature anywhere from 20 to say 35 feet deep, depending on the lake. And those trout, they're, they're seeking out that water temperature their prey may or may not be holding at that level this time of the year. So the trout may have to leave that comfortable temperature band to find, find some forage, to find something to eat. So what does that mean for the trout angler? Well, that means if, you, if you're gonna go out and you wanna be successful during the spring to summer transition, you've gotta be prepared to cover a lot of water. You've gotta be prepared to work you know, a large section of the water column early in the morning at a lake, let's say we're at a lake where the surface temperature is 65, 67, 68 degrees on top, you could still anticipate finding rainbows right on the surface at dawn and you know pretty much before the sun hits the water and again in the afternoon, um, you know late evening when the sun gets off the water. You can also expect trout to move up if you get a lot of wind, you get a lot of white caps, um, those white caps, you know, they'll, they'll energize the food chain. They'll also create some current and the trout will pull up into, into that sort of water despite the fact that it's a little warm for them. So the bottom line is you've got to be prepared to cover water and you've got to be prepared to look for trout anywhere from the surface all the way down to 30, 40 feet deep at this point. I remember last June, early June, I was up at Frenchman's Lake and I was absolutely killing the trout but I had to run my lures at 25 feet deep. That's where the comfort zone was. That's where the insects were starting to hatch, to migrate to the surface. The trout were in that you know, 20 to 30 foot zone. As long as I put an orange spoon at about 25 feet, the action was very good, very steady. I just had to stay on the move, um, just keeping these, keep working these big you know, bays. 
there were fish holding in all of them and I had steady action. I was probably catching a couple fish an hour all morning long. So that's really typical of the kind of action you can expect in early summer as you start to kind of dial in the fish and figure out what's going on from a day to day basis. So what do you show these trout? What will these trout hit? Well, they'll hit almost anything. And that can be one of the frustrating aspects of you know, late spring, early summer fishing is it's really hard to establish a pattern. It's hard to establish a depth pattern. Um, it, it, it's hard to establish an area where the fish are feeding because the forage tends to be scattered. And uh, it's really hard to establish a pattern on lure. Rarely do you go out at this time of the year and, you know, stumble on that magic, you know, plug or spoon in a certain color and that's the end all be all and you just kill the fish on that and they won't hit anything else. Right now you're apt to catch fish on maglips, rigged bait, rapalas, spoons, grubs, rigged worms, pretty much whatever you want to troll. But there are some lures that are more efficient than others at confronting the unique challenges of the spring to summer transition. Namely being a bait that fishes well at a variety of speeds, but particularly at medium to high speeds, and also a lure you know, that allows you to, to easily fish various depths with minimal fuss. So my number one offering, and probably my number two and number three offerings for this sort of situation are spoons. And you know what? I, it, it's technique. It's not so much the spoon. I don't care you know, which ones you pull. My number one choice for this type of fishing is my full-size trigger spoon. And I've got two basic color patterns here. High, uh, or uh, this is the all-chrome one. Low country reservoirs where the fish are feeding on pond smelt and thread fin shad. I'm going with the metallics to start the day. Your chromes, your gold, your copper. I'm going with those colors. I might mix in a black trigger early in the morning, but uh, by and large, I'm gonna match that bait fish hatch, and uh, at least I'm gonna start out that way, and then I'm gonna kinda take the fish's temperature and let them tell me what they really want after I've given them a good test, after I've, I've found some fish with the sonar, after I know for sure, I'm, I'm very confident that I've shown some fish this color scheme of spoons, then I can make another decision. They're hitting the metallics, they're not. But start out with the bait fish stuff. Match the hatch, catch the fish. That's low country reservoirs. Now up in the mountains, um, I'm gonna go with the orange stuff, the fire tiger, the bright stuff. Up in the Sierras, I love orange, I love gold. Probably start out with the, with the orange on chrome and uh, very good chance that, uh, that I would be successful on this at a high Sierra Lake. Also with the pink and chrome, stuff like that. And again, early in the morning, I would not hesitate. In fact, I would encourage you to run a black spoon. Now, those are my trigger spoons. It's a medium sized spoon that you can run in that two to 2.7 mile an hour range, two threes, probably the sweet spot. Although Wes has been catching a lot of fish on these, running them just a hair slower than I would run them. So very versatile lure. Other lures in this category, you know, include the, uh, the large needle fish, um, kind of the same deal. You can run them at the same speeds. If you've been trout trolling for long, you've got a bunch of needle fish. XLs will work, stuff like that. Now, I'm fishing out of a kayak. And uh, as I said, you know, we're experimenting with depth, with depths, which means I'll be running the downrigger part of the time. So it's kind of hard for me in the kayak to maintain speeds much above 2.5, 2.7 miles an hour for the long haul when pulling the downrigger. But if you're, if you're fishing out of a boat, that's not a problem. If you can maintain speed, I would, uh, I would encourage you to start the day and maybe fish all day long with a spoon that you control very fast. Now, these are my speed spoons. Um, you guys have seen the channel, you know they come in a variety of metallic colors as well as orange with a chrome back. Um, if you can maintain 2.7 to three and a half miles an hour, especially with your downrigger, uh, I would encourage you to start out either with my speed spoons, um, with humdingers, especially the half ounce one. I don't have one in front of me. This is the eighth ounce model. Humdingers are a great choice. And finally, we all have this lure in our box. We all have multiple versions of these. The uh, Thomas Lures Speedy Shiner. If you can maintain those speeds while still working the water column, these types of spoons are deadly because they're very good at triggering reaction strikes and they're very, they're, they're very good at you know working working at various depths, they're very good in that say 
two and a half to three and a half mile an hour range. But uh, as I said, if I'm fishing out of the kayak, um, it, it can be troublesome after an hour or two if, I, if I'm running the downrigger maintaining speed with these fast moving spoons. Now, thinking about Dodgers. Guys are going to wonder if I'm pairing my spoons with Dodgers. And during the early part of the transition, early, uh, early summer, late spring, I don't use Dodgers very often with spoons at high mountain lakes. I do like to run one spoon and Dodger combo if I'm down at a big reservoir. Places like Folsom, New Maloney's, Don Pedro, uh, Lake Shasta. And uh, for those big water reservoirs, I am definitely running some sort of metallic colored six inch blade like this Pro Fish Eye with the moon crackle tape on the back. Um, I just want one of these in the spread because as I said, the fish tend to be scattered. It's important to draw the fish in so you can show them your bait fish imitations. So probably one rod, I would be running a spoon naked. Another rod, I would be running a spoon 36 to 40 inches behind some sort of six inch blade. It could be one of my fisheye pros. It could be a sling blade. It could be something like that. Something that I control at a solid two miles an hour, still cover a ton of water, but you know, throw out that calling card, throw out that flash, throw out that vibration, pull those fish in, then they see the spoon, then it's fish on. So that's kind of my thoughts on Dodgers during this transition. The high Sierras are different. I use Dodgers up there, but I use them for different purposes. And I've got a Dodger video coming up here in the coming days. Um, the final kind of presentation, you know, beyond spoons that I really like in the big reservoirs are soft plastics. Now it's critical if you're gonna run soft plastics that you rig up with either a four or a six inch blade. And I very much favor the six inch blades. And uh, basically what I'm pulling in the early summer at, you know, valley impoundments, foothill impoundments, pulling soft plastics behind these blades, things like my shad tubes right there, absolutely deadly small shad imitation um, these things will take kings they will take rainbows two and a half to three dodger links behind a six inch blade put some pro cure on it maybe put a little piece of anchovy skin on it absolutely deadly control it at two miles an hour all day long you can fish it from the surface all the way down to as deep as you're seeing marks super effective um, the other soft offering that really works well for me are my minnow tubes, very similar to the shad tubes. They're a little thinner profile. Use the shad tubes at lakes that have threadfin shad. Use the minnow tubes at lake that primarily have pond smell and uh, you will be on the road to success. And of course, you know, don't cross off other baits as well. The gulp minnows, the hoochies, stuff like that. Basically, soft baits paired with a six inch dodger. That's my number one and number two offerings, um, spoons because they allow you to cover a lot of water and a lot of depths very quickly. And Dodgers paired with soft plastics because it's such a deadly imitation of a predator feeding on schooling bait. They see that soft little tube or that, that shad tube, you know, stutter stopping behind that blade. They grab it, it feels soft, it tastes right. You've slathered it with Procure. Maybe you put a piece of anchovy meat on it. It feels right, it tastes right, it is right. It's embedded in their jaw. You know what I'm gonna say, fish on baby. Anyway, those are my basic strategies for the spring to summer transition. Um, look forward to that Dodger video. I'm gonna talk about the Dodgers of summer and how to use Dodgers to your best advantage, but that's another subject for another time. I'm Cal Kellogg, I'm signing off. I hope this information helps you catch more and bigger fish You know, this, this spring as we transition into the summer months. We've got some great fishing ahead. I'm getting a phone call. I'm signing off. If you're looking for gear, fishhuntshoot.com. And please hit that subscribe button. Let's see which, what, which one of these clowns is calling me up that wants to talk fishing. I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm having some fun. I love to talk fishing. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for all the support. Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. <laughs> Super heavy. Wow. Very nice.